Spain, I had the chance to interact with elements of the Iranian regime, even meeting Ali Khamenei once. What I have to refer to here today is based on my personal experience and may be taken as a testimony more than an assessment. My first opportunity came on September the 6th of 2000 when I had the chance to meet with then President Hatami in New York around the UN Millennium Summit. Needless to say that I was intrigued by his apparently more open policies in his first term, he was the winner against all odds because he was able to mobilize a large size of Iranians that supported him as a driver for change, respect of rights, more tolerance and openness. He was also very favorable to introduce liberalization measures in the economy. After an initial conversation, I start to think that Hatami has real potentials for moving his country in a positive direction. When he asked if I was willing to pay an official visit to Iran, I grabbed the opportunity and right there, early September, and replied to him, sure, I can go in October 22 and 23rd. In a month, he was surprised, but reacted well, and my visit took place, took place when I said. In Turan, besides several meetings with ministers and other officials, Hatemi set aside a good chunk of time for two of us to be alone and talk freely. In principle, there was not a scheduled meeting with the supreme leader who, I was told by everyone, was quite reluctant to sit down with Westerners. To my own surprise, once we were there, we received the special distinction to go to see him. Khamenei was accompanied by a circle of ayatollahs. It took place in a sort of room in what I thought was an enclosed atmosphere. <coughs> the meeting with something between tense and harsh, despite the diplomatic respect we showed to each other. There was no exchange of introductory remarks, nor some sentences of break the ice. Hamenei went directly to the issues he, want, he wanted to address. He expressed himself as the guardian of the very nature and values of the Islamic Republic. The 1979 revolution was inspired to get rid of two evils, to U.S. and Israel, and to preserve on earth the virtues of the religious regime of the Ayatollahs. As far as the U.S. and Israel, and probably Western nations, exist, the risk of perverting his religious society will exist, something that he cannot allow to happen. Thus, to him, the threat from the West was not only in military terms, but also in cultural terms, values more than weapons. I found a man not only essentially inspired by his creed and faith, but much more nationalistic than I expected. 
He wants Iran to flourish in all kinds of fields, particularly in the scientific and technical arenas, to camps where he plays a lot of emphasis in order to attain self-sufficiency and independence. As I said before, I was not I, I am not an expert of on schism, but he made clear to me that his religious vision of an Islam that is superior to other forms of faith was clearly translated in political terms under his authority. Israel to him was a kind of a historical cancer and anomaly, a country to be put in flames and condemned to disappear. I have to say that we were using the services of a translator, so we must be very careful with the expressions. In any case, at some point he said very clearly, though softly, as he spoke, that an open confrontation against the US and Israel was inevitable and that he was working for Iran to prevail in such a confrontation. Actually, it was his duty as the ultimate vanguard of the Islamic global revolution. He was so insistent on this that I had to ask him, half jokingly, if he could let me know the date what he was going to start the fight against America and Israel. But more seriously, despite, despite my all conciliatory capabilities, at the moment, I said to him what I am still saying today. In a war, you need to know which side are your friend of. And if I have to choose between the Islamic revolutionary Iran of the Ayatollahs and Israel or the US, I had no slightest doubt in which camp I was. Iran did not want to buy a bomb from, let us say, North Korea or Pakistan. What he wanted Iran to have was the indigenous capability to produce an Iranian bomb. When you take the long shot, you realize how all the pieces come together. For instance, all the current debate whether or not Iran wants the bomb or just the technical knowledge to be able to produce it, it is nonsensical to me. It is not only to the nuclear program, pr program what you have to look at, but also their efforts and achievements in ballistic missiles area on Iran's influence in several groups from Hezbollah, Hamas, of the Islamic Jihad. It is within the larger context when the nuclear quest takes all its meaning and importance. Once, in a meeting with Vladimir Putin, when I raised the risk of the S-300 being delivered to Iran, he came closer to me and whispered, Jose Maria, don't worry. If you, we can, I, you, we can sell everything, even if we are worried by an Iranian nuclear bomb, because at the end of the day, the Israelis will take care of it. I don't think it's fair putting all the burden of solving a global problem in the shoulders of Israel. But given the current environment, the decision makers here in Jerusalem must have to face the question on how to deal with an impending nuclear Iran. Ideally, 
with all the allies with Israel will be able to master. I do hope there will be some, at least the important ones. But in any case, we should accept that Israel has the right to defend itself by itself. When you sat with uh, the Supreme Leader, did you understand that he was speaking about a cultural conflict? Or did you understand from his words, as conveyed to you by a translator, that this was going to be a military conflict? And then I'll open it up to questions. Well, I use the expression of uh, open, com open confrontation, an open confrontation including all the possibilities, not only cultural, but all, uh, as well military confrontation. And I use the uh, open confrontation and the expression of war. This is uh, a possibility. This is open in this mentality. It is necessary to fighting during uh, some time, during years, without war will be um, possible, but this is necessary war, we have war. This is no disputing. It's all, all is included in this idea of open confrontation and the necessity to eliminate the, the real dangers for the existence of, of Iran. So just to follow up, you understood that he was basically saying, yes, our vision is the destruction of Israel this necessary to eliminate the, the, the risk, the threat that Israel supposed, and they, mm, uh, that they means, uh, uh, obviously, the elimination of Israel. If Israel is alive, <coughs> the threat survives. <laughs> this is no sense, because they, they're trying to eliminate the threat, and the, the, the elimination of the threat means that Israel must be eliminated. He consider and understand that Israel is a threat and, and the U.S. is a threat and an, and an expression and of threat and acceptable for him because it's a serious threat for the um, Iranian revolution, Islamic revolution. He considers the expression of the, his Iranian revolution the, 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 the superior form, cultural superior form. And he not accept living under uh, uh, other possibilities. And they con he considered, in the, uh, their, therefore, Israel a threat, and he wants to eliminate this threat. Uh, if it is necessary in, uh, in open co with, uh, with proxies, with proxies, <laughs> with several friends, with several friends, directly, directly, I don't know, but this is his mind. Going back to your meeting with Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, we have seen different language from people who are associated with him in Arabic and Farsi. For example, the head of one of the banyads, the one of the charities, used the term of, uh, we are looking forward to the burning of Israel. He said that in uh, Arabic on Almanar television. When uh, the Supreme Leader spoke to you, did he use any language that gave you a clear indication that he was speaking about the destruction of the State of Israel? Clearly, yeah, mm, very clearly. It is, it is necessary in uh, his mentality in trying to eliminate uh, and to um, wipe Israel off the map. Um, the two more important expression of the the bad people <laughs> in, in the world, bad people, bad countries, are Israel and U.S. And if you eliminate this, the rest of the Western countries of the Western problem is more or less is less relevant. But uh, d definitely, we must begin in for Israel. And if it's possible, eliminate Israel. They, he will take the decision to eliminate Israel. And then, if it's possible, to create problems to the U.S. or to neutralize, or even to to put in problems the U.S. 
he will continue in this idea. This is the, uh, my, my clear and personal experience. Without any doubt. Huh? Use the word you eliminate the word Israel. I finish, eliminate, uh, put uh, uh, the end of the, this, the, this story. So let me just make sure we understand each other. President Khatami could not follow through on your request that Iran ch change its attitude, and specifically the Supreme Leader change its attitude on the elimination of Israel. I asked him about this, but there is, they take uh, not about uh, this question, but then facts and facts in politics are the most important question. They demonstrate that the capacity of change the things are very limited. I, I know very well that for this, for the, the, the Ayatollahs, for these people, even Khamenei, the, mo the most important expression of the, um, of, the, of the evil in the world are Israel and the U.S.